Begin with, open your Bible today to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. We'll begin reading in verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 5, begin reading in verse 6. He said... Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now, verse 8, Peter gives us a warning. And he warns us about the devil. And he uses a metaphor of the devil here, a word picture. He says the devil is like a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour whom he may devour. Today I want to talk to you about how the devil devours nations and people, churches, and even Christians. The fact that Peter warns you and I about being devoured by the devil shows you he can devour Christians as well as nations and people, and he does. Now that word devour, the word devour in that verse has a number of definitions and they're all true of the devil. The word devour means to eat up or to swallow down. It means to destroy and to consume with violence. It means to destroy, annihilate. It means to waste. It means to consume wealth and substance by fraud or oppression. It means to destroy spiritually to ruin the soul. And it also means to slay. That's what the word devour means. And the devil does all those things. Listen, there are nations and there are multitudes of people, churches, and even Christians who have been devoured by the devil. Now how does the devil do that? How does he devour people? Well look in your Bible first at first, as Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. Ephesians 6, verse number 10 and 11. And Paul wrote here, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now Paul tells us here in this chapter that for us to stand against the wiles of the devil, we must put on the whole armor of God. And he mentions all the various pieces to the armor. <clears throat> the word I'm calling your attention to is in verse 11. The word wiles. The wiles of the devil. Now, the word wiles in that verse uh, comes from the Greek word methodia. Let me spell it for you. That word wiles, translated that English word wiles in that verse, comes from the Greek word methodia. Listen to the spelling of this word. M-E-T-H-O-D-E-I-A. We get our word method from that, from that word. The English word method comes from that Greek word methodia. So the wiles of the devil, what is that? That's the methods, that's the strategies that the devil uses to devour nations and people and capture Christians and drag them down into apostasy and captivity. That's what the wiles are. It's the various methods, strategies the devil uses to devour people. 
Now, how does he devour people? What are his methods? Well, I'll tell you what, he's got a lot of them. First of all, I want to point out to you that one way the devil devours nations is by oppressive rulers and governments. It's by oppressive rulers and governments. Turn back in your Bible to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel 7. Now here in Daniel 7, Daniel has a vision of four beasts that come up out of the sea. And the angel interprets the vision to Daniel. And in this, in this vision, this dream that Daniel has, in this vision, the first beast that rose up out of the sea was like a lion. And the second beast was like a bear. And the third beast was like a leopard. But that fourth beast was altogether different. Daniel 7, 7, it says, And this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Now again, these beasts, they represent kingdoms and nations that would come to power. Now, three of those nations and kingdoms have come and gone. The lion that came up first, that represented Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar. The, the, the bear that came up behind the lion was Media Persia, Darius and Sarias. The leopard, that was Greece, headed up by Alexander the Great. But that fourth beast, that's future. That beast has not come to power yet. He will in these last days. And notice what it says about that fourth beast in verse 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and I watch it, and shall devour, there's that word again, it shall devour the whole earth, tread it down, break it into pieces. Now, folks, that fourth beast right there represent a kingdom that will devour the whole earth when it comes to power in the future. And that kingdom right there, that fourth beast, that fourth kingdom, is just like all the rest. That fourth kingdom will be put into power by the devil, by the devil, to tread down and break in pieces nations and people. See? Now, what that shows you is this. When I read about that fourth beast, what that fourth beast will do, how it will tread down and devour the whole earth, tread it down, break it into pieces, that shows me right there that the devil can use kingdoms and political rulers and oppressive governments to devour huge numbers of peoples and nations. And you know what? Throughout history, the devil's done that. Throughout history, the devil has used many kings and kingdoms and rulers and oppressive governments to devour nations, people, and even the saints of God. Now, I'm going to give you some illustrations of that. How the devil uses oppressive rulers and governments to devour people. You take, for example, consider the nations that Satan has devoured by communism. Consider the nations the devil has devoured by godless communism. You know, you take Russia. Russia is a communist country. How many people live there? About 146 million people. China is a communist nation. How many people live in China? 1,352,000,000. Cuba, 11 million people live in Cuba. Communist. North Korea. 24 million. Laos, 6 million. Vietnam, 85 million. India, which is generally a socialist communist nation, 1 billion, 210 million. Now, communism, as you know, is an atheist form of government. Communism does not believe in God, Christ, or the Bible. God, Christ, the Bible, or outlawed. 
and those nations. And so what I just read you was a list of nations that Satan has devoured with a false system and false government and oppressive government of communism. Those people are bound, they're in bondage to the tyranny of communism. And in those nations, God, Christ, and the Bible and preaching and witnessing are outlawed. And if you get up and start preaching God's word in those nations, they'll kill you in a minute. The devil has devoured them with a false system of communism. And then consider, consider the nations that have been devoured by the political religious system of Islam. Consider the nations devoured by the political system and religious system of Islam. I'm talking about the nations that have a large population of Muslims who live by and enforce Sharia law. And of course, that law does not recognize the God of the Bible or Jesus Christ or anything to do with God or Jesus Christ. They're outlawed in those nations that, that have a prominent or predominant Muslim uh, population. Uh, consider this. Indonesia. Indonesia is the, has, has more Muslims than any other country in the world. It's 202 million Muslims living in Indonesia. Uh, 174 million live in Pakistan. 160 million live in India. In Bangladesh, 145 million. Egypt is 78 million. Nigeria is 78 million. Iran, there's 73 million Muslims in Iran. Turkey has 71 million. Algeria has 34 million. Afghanistan, 32 million Muslims. Morocco, 31 million. Iraq has 30 million. Uh, the Sudan, Sudan, 30 million. Ethiopia has 28 million. Uh, Uzbekistan, that's in Soviet Union, 26 million. Saudi Arabia has 24 million. Yemen, that country, Yemen, has uh, 23 million. In China, there's 21 million Muslims. Uh, Syria, there's 20 million. In Malaysia, there's something like 16 million. Now, folks, listen. God, Christ, and the Bible are outlawed of those nations. You show me a nation today that's predominantly Muslim or Islam, you can mark it down, God, Christ, the Bible, or outlaw. Matter of fact, you can lose your life in many of the nations that I just mentioned just for being a Christian and not a Muslim. Now, think about this. When you put the communist and the Muslim nations together, folks, you realize that's over one half of the world's population? <laughs> think about it. One half of this world today is governed by communist, socialist, Muslim governments and people. And in those nations, a Christian's life is in constant jeopardy. They have no freedom to witness, to meet openly, or convert lost people. The Bible in those nations are, is either banned or hated. And lost people in those nations have very little, if any chance at all, of hearing the gospel. So you see, that's the devil. The devil has devoured those nations and those people by oppressive government. And the last days is going to get even worse. May even include this country right here. Now how else does the devil devour people? Well, he devours by false religion. False religion. Look at Matthew 24. In Matthew 24, Jesus is painting a picture of the last days. And in Matthew 24, in verse 4 and 5, Matthew chapter 24, verse number 4 and 5, He said, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that you, no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Look down at verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. 
Now, folks, what that is, what you just read, is a warning. It's a warning about false prophets, false teachers, and false religion. Now, we know that one way the devil devours people is by false satanic religion. Does he not? Guarantee he does. Now, how many false religions are there in the world today? <laughs> and how many people have been deceived and devoured by false religion? Millions. Millions. You take, for example, Catholicism. How many Roman Catholics are there in the world today? One billion. One hundred and eighty-one million. How about Muslims? They're one and a half billion, with a B. One and a half billion Muslims. Hindus. 942 million. Buddhist, 462 million. The Chinese traditional religion, that's a religion in China, 394 million. Sikhism, 23 million. Judaism, 14 million. Jiu Jitsu, that's a cult, 19 million. Spiritualism, 11 million. Baha'ism, 7 million. Confucianism, Confucianism, six million. There's a group in China called the Fulong Gong, that's the name of them, 10 million of them. Uh, Jainism, four million. Shintoism, four million. There's a religious cult in, in Vietnam called KODO, and there's four million of them. Uh, Zoroastrianism, two million. Tenrinko, there's another one I never heard of them, but I wrote it down. Tenrinko, there's two million of them. And then, of course, you've got the Russellites, JWs, seven million. Mormons, 12 million. The Moonies, anywhere from five to seven million. Scientology, 500,000. Uh, Rastafarism, one billion, one million rather. Unitarians, 800,000. Christian scientists, 300,000, Druez, 500,000, Herr Karishma, uh, nearly a million of them, uh, Ekakar, Ekanakar, I can't pronounce it, 500,000. There's a group in Tibet, China, called Bon, B-O-N, 100,000 of them. And then, of course, the Wicca, the witch, one to three million of them. Now, folks, think about it. All those millions and even billions of people are blinded by the God of this world. Think about that. The majority of them do not believe in the true and living God. Most of them have many gods, many idols, and many deities. And they all teach distortions about Jesus Christ. And not a one of them believes in the true gospel of grace. So all those people in all those religions have been devoured devoured by the false religions of the devil. Now, how else does the devil devour people? Well, not only false religions, but churches that teach salvation by works. How about them? The Unitarians, they teach salvation by works. The Seventh-day Adventists teach salvation by works. The Holiness groups teach salvation by grace. They say, well, you get saved free, but then, after you get saved, you maintain and keep salvation by works. Well, that's a denial of salvation by grace. Uh, the Catholic Church, you get saved by works, you're kept saved by works. It's all works. The Church of Christ, Campbellite Church, it's works. And you know what? Most liberal Protestant churches, such as the Methodists and the Lutherans, teach some type of works to either get saved or works to stay saved. Now, all these churches, they claim to believe in Jesus. But I'll tell you what, they're just as dangerous as the cults because they deny, they really deny the Lord because they add works to the gospel. And by adding works to the gospel, they pervert the gospel. And if you believe the wrong gospel, you're just as lost as a man that doesn't believe it at all, see? So we see right there that the devil not only uses false religion, but he uses churches today who claim to believe in Jesus, but yet they teach salvation by works. Well, they're just as lost as someone worshiping an image somewhere. 
And then, how about atheism? Atheism. That's another system. That's another ism the devil uses to devour people. You realize how many atheists there are in the world today? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Japan leads the Japan leads the list. Think about this. Seventy-six percent of people in Japan today do not believe in God. No God whatsoever. Seventy-six percent in Japan. Sweden, sixty-five percent. Denmark, sixty-one percent. Macau, 60%. Czechoslovakia, something like 57%. No God, atheist. Hong Kong, 57%. France, 53%. No, they're atheist. Norway, 51%. Estonia, 49%. The Netherlands, 47%. Uh, Finland, 44%. The United Kingdom, the UK, 41% of people in England today don't believe in God. 41%. That's England. South Korea, 41%. Germany, 40% atheist. Hungary, 39%. Belgium, 38%. New Zealand, 34%. Bulgaria, 37%. Slovenia, 36%. Russia, 30%. So you see the devil has devoured those people by destroying all their faith in God. In other words, they have no faith in God or in any God. You see, the devil uses false religion to pervert the faith of many, and he uses atheism to completely destroy the faith of others. But either way, they're both devoured. That's how he does it. And also, another way the devil devours is by spiritual deception. Spiritual deception. Now look if you would in your Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's a prediction of a major apostasy in the last days. And this apostasy is even among God's people. Depart from the faith. You know, to depart from the faith means you were once in the faith. And you depart from it. That word depart, it means revolt. Desert and abandon. So to depart from the faith means to revolt, desert the faith, and abandon the faith. And folks, of course, when a person, when they depart from the faith, they're devoured by the devil. Now, why, what's the reason that Paul gives as to why these people depart from the faith? They do it by giving heed to seducing spirits. They give heed to seducing spirits. Well, who are these seducing spirits? They're false teachers. What do they teach that cause the saints to depart from the faith? The answer is doctrines of devils. See that? Look at it again. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some, not all, thank God, but some shall depart from the faith. They'll abandon the faith. They'll give it up. Why? Because they give heed to seducing spirits. Who are those? False teachers, false prophets. And what do they teach? Doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils. That's what causes them to depart from the faith. Look again at 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Twenty-four. 2 Timothy 2, 24, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Now again, Paul is writing about saved people here. 
He says they're taken captive by the devil. And how are they taken captive by the devil? Look up at verse 14. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the verdict of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved to God, a workman, that needs not to be ashamed, right to the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat and doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concern the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. You see, the thing that, that causes these Christians to fall and become a captive of the devil is when they give heed to the false doctrines that Paul warns about in verse 16, 17, 18. It's those shun and profane babblings. It's that false doctrine of verse 18. That's what causes these people to become captives of the devil. In other words, the devil uses false doctrine to capture people with and snare them. Now the question is, who are these men? And what are they like? Well, it might surprise you. But look, if you would, the next chapter, chapter 3. And this chapter is a warning about the last days. Evil men of the last days. And in chapter 3, 13, he said, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now, that's a warning right there about these seducers. And we know how they seduce. They seduce with false doctrine. But who are these men? There's a better description of them. Well, here they are in verse 8. Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these, the evil men of verse 13, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. Also notice in verse uh, 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. In other words, here in this chapter, Paul is warning of us about evil men. And these evil men have a form of godliness. They appear to be godly, and they're not. And Paul warns us about them. And... In this chapter, he gives us an illustration to help us understand exactly who these men are and what they do. He says these men here, verse 8, are as Janus and Jambres, which withstood Moses. Well, what's that a reference to? That's a reference to the book of Exodus. Moses went up before Pharaoh. Let my people go. You know the story. Pharaoh said you can't go. And so, God Almighty, when Moses stood up before Pharaoh and demanded that he let Israel go, to back up what he was saying, Aaron took a rod, threw it down the ground. What happened to it? It became a snake, didn't it? What did Janus and Jambres do? They threw a rod down. It became a snake, but every snake ate their snake up. But that's not the half of the story. Moses and Aaron also performed other miracles in the land of Egypt. And you know what happened? Janus and Jambres, they were among those sorcerers back there that matched their miracles. In other words, uh, Moses and Aaron caused the frogs to come up. So did the magicians and sorcerers of Egypt. Everything Moses and Aaron did, they did. They matched them. So how did they withstand Moses? By working miracles. Miracle workers. Signs, wonders, miracles. That's how they withstood Moses. They finally got to a place where they could not duplicate Moses and Aaron anymore. But for a while, it was tit for tat. What Moses and Aaron did, they did. These men were satanic evil men, and the way they withstood the man of God was by working signs, wonders, and miracles. Look, if you would, back to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Matthew 24, 
We just read this verse. I want to read it again. In Matthew 24, in verse 24, 24, 24, he said, For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that it were possible they shall deceive the very elect. Here is another warning about false teachers and false prophets working signs and wonders. Just like Janus and Jambres worked signs and wonders, Paul, Jesus said these men will work signs and wonders. Now, with that in mind, turn your Bible this time to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, what you read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 is the ultimate. This man here is the ultimate false teacher and false prophet. And who I'm talking about is the Antichrist. Now, you know, the devil is religious. And he has a son, the son of perdition, who is religious. They say, well, what's his religion? Well, let's just look and see. Here he is. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. That's apostasy. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. The wicked one there is the Antichrist. Now watch it. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, now watch it now, even him, the wicked one, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Think about that. The Antichrist will have a coming, a false coming. And when he shows up, he's religious. He's a religious man. He's got a gospel, he's got a doctrine, he's got apostles, he's got a prophet, and he's working signs, wonders, and miracles. Jesus said, beware of men who work signs, wonders, and miracles. Paul said, Janus and Jambres withstood Moses by working signs, wonders, and miracles. But folks, I ask you today, what religious system is it today that emphasizes signs, wonders, and miracles? It don't take long to figure that out, does it? That's a description of the modern-day charismatic movement if I ever saw one. The devil's Christ is a charismatic. That is, he works signs, wonders, and miracles. The satanic trinity works signs, wonders, and miracles. Read Revelation. Jesus said there are going to be men that will come, they will deceive thousands, and they'll do it by working signs, wonders, miracles. Paul said that that the way, these men resist the truth. Men are going to resist the truth today in the future as, it, as they resisted it in Moses' day and they resisted Moses' day by working signs, wonders, and miracles. There it is. And I'll tell you what, it's no coincidence to me that the most dangerous religious movement in America is the charismatic movement. I believe that. It's like a giant religious vacuum cleaner that sucks up thousands of people with its false signs and wonders and false promises and false doctrine. Now that movement appeals to lost people and called Christians who are led by their feelings and emotions and by sights and senses and by sounds. Its doctrines, its music, its crowds, its false miracles, its false promises are very seducing. Charismatic preachers or the seducing spirits who teach the false doctrines of health and wealth and prosperity. Those are doctrines of the devil. But they are very appealing to the flesh. Very appealing to the flesh of lost men and called Christians. And I'll tell you what, 
Once you get into that cult right there, and I call it a cult, once you get into that religious system, it's hard to come out because it's like a drug. It's like a drug. It's a religious drug, and that drug right there is stronger than cocaine or alcohol. Folks, I'm saying to you right now, the old devil is working day and night, and he is devouring thousands and thousands of people. You see, so when Paul talks about those departing from the faith and taking captives of the devil, that, that, that's how it happens, by becoming involved in these religious movements that claim to be of God, and they're not of God at all. Now, one more time, I want you to look at the verse over here in Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. You know, you can, you can understand how that this charismatic movement is so attractive to people because it says that if you believe what we believe, join up with us, God will give you good health, prosperity, see, health, wealth, prosperity. You know what, folks, there's not a verse in that Bible that God ever promised you those things. I know what God promised us. I know what Jesus promised. Did Jesus said in the world you'll have health, wealth, and prosperity? Is that what he said? No. You know what he said? He said in the world you shall have what? Tribulation. Tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. But he said, I also give you my peace to get you through it. That's what you can expect. I'll tell you this. If this health, wealth, and prosperity gospel, if it's the truth then the apostles were a bunch of liars. You know why? Do you think they had health, wealth, and prosperity? Not one of them did. They were all murdered. And one of them lost their lives. They were beat up. They were persecuted. They suffered tremendous tribulation. And every one of them were killed. They didn't think too much about that health, wealth, and prosperity gospel, did they? And if you buy into that doctrine, you're going to be disappointed and deceived. You know, I, I believe one reason why a lot of people today... I'm talking about Christians right now. I believe the reason why a lot of Christians today had departed from the faith and got away from God is because they bought into that health, wealth, prosperity gospel and found out it didn't work. And you know what happened to them? Instead of blaming the preacher that lied to them, you know who they blame? God. God, why did you allow this to happen to me? My health is not good. I'm not wealthy. I'm not prosperous. I'm supposed to be healthy. I'm supposed to be wealthy. I'm supposed to be prosperous, and I'm not. It's your fault, God. And they depart from the faith. Instead of blaming the lying preacher, they blame the Holy God. That's why they depart. This is happening right now. I know people who were once involved in that movement, and they got to find, they found out it was a lie and a farce, and today, you, don't, you can't even talk to them about God, Christ, the Bible. They don't want to hear it. They feel betrayed by God Himself. They were not betrayed by God. God had promised that. They were betrayed by lost preachers teaching these doctrines. The devil used them, see? Now here in Luke 7, Luke 8 rather, the parable of the sower and the seed, Luke 8, verse 7, it says, And some fell among thorns, the seed. And the thorns sprang up with it and choked it, and other fell on good ground, sprang up, and so forth. Now, I want you to look at this thorns deal. Look at verse 14. And that which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Here's the parable of the sower and the seed. The sower goes out, he sows seed on four different grounds. In one case, he sowed seed amongst the thorns. And what happened was, when the fruit came up, when it sprung up, the thorns choked it. And that was the end of it. And the definition of it is this. These people, he said in verse 14, that which fell among thorns are they, which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. What you got there is that what you got there is carnal, what I call carnal immorality. That verse right there describes carnal Christianity. They're choked, you see, with what? Cares, riches, and pleasures. 
That's carnal Christianity. And notice something what it says about these people. It says they bring no fruit to perfection. Carnal Christians do not produce. They're non-productive. And I tell you what, the devil, he has no reason to fear about carnal Christians that don't produce. Matter of fact, carnal Christians are trophies of the devil. The devil holds them up before God, and the devil says, Look here, God, these people love care. these people here love pleasure and riches more than they love you. See that? That's how the devil works. Carnal Christians and apostate Christians have been devoured by the devil. Now, folks, in this message today, I hope you've seen how the devil had devoured, swatted up nations and huge numbers of people and even apostate carnal Christians. I tell you what, huh? you got to say this about the devil. The devil is a very zealous evangelist, is he not? He's winning more souls to himself than we are. Now, of course, when the devil wins souls, they don't get blessed to say they end up being cursed and hurt. But he is a soul winner. And look at all the different ways and methods and strategies that he uses to devour people. And I tell you what, you get to looking around you and you begin to believe, you begin to think you're like Elijah, you know. You know, it was so bad back there in Elijah's day that he looked around and he said, you know what, God, I'm the only person back here standing for the truth. <laughs> He felt like it, didn't he? It was so apostate. And God said, well, Elijah, you may feel that way, but there's 7,000 more just like you in this world today. And you look around us today, you look at how the devil has triumphed over these communist nations, these socialist nations, and these Muslim nations. And we see all these huge cults and isms in the world today, and all this false religion, and the millions and billions of people swallowed up by the devil and you wonder, why? What is there anybody that believes the truth? Well, thank God there is. Not many. Matter of fact, the Bible calls them a remnant, right? A remnant. How many are in the charismatic? Uh, I don't know. Movement? It'd be millions. It'd be millions. It'd be millions. It'd have to be. Now, what can we do? Have you heard all the bad news about how what the devil is doing? What can we do? Well, first of all. We must be sober. We must be vigilant ourselves to keep ourselves from being devoured by the devil. I mean, listen, when we see the devil, when we see him trying to get a foothold in our life or in our marriage or in our home, we've got to kick him out. Knock him out the door. Don't let him in. And when the devil comes at you and I with doctrines of devils and he tempts us we must resist him and fight him with the sword of the Spirit like Jesus did. When Jesus battled the devil, he used one weapon, the Word of God, and it knocked the devil out. Something else. We must also increase our efforts to reach as many lost people as we can with the gospel of grace before the devil deceives them and swallows them up, as he has done in so many nations. And we must increase our efforts to to inform and edify God's people and establish them in God's word to keep them from being devoured by the devil. And we must live our lives in such a way that the devil and his demons cannot bring a charge against us and make it stick. In other words, we must live our lives in such a way the devil can never claim us as a trophy. And we must be bold and open our mouths and preach the Word of God in season and out of season because it is God's Word that defeats the devil. That's the only weapon that can defeat him. It is the Word of God, and it'll do it. And, and the Word of God will protect you and your home and your marriage and your family and your friends from being devoured by the devil. It will. The Word of God will do it. One verse. Look at it. I'll show you that. Look, if you would, to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Should have told you to put a marker there. I want you to look at this. First Timothy chapter 4. Now I want to read verse 1 again. Now the Spirit speaketh especially in the latter times. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits 
and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That's a prediction of a major apostasy coming within the church. Now, what can I do to be saved from it? Look down in verse, uh, look down in verse 13. Paul told Timothy, till I come, give attendance to reading. That's reading God's word. To exhortation, that's hearing God's word preach. And to doctrine, that's study. In other words, read the word of God, listen to the word of God, study the word of God. Verse 15, meditate upon these things, give thyself hold of them, that thy property may appear to all men. Now watch it. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continuing them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. <clears throat> the salvation in verse 16 is not from sin and hell. The salvation in that verse is from that apostasy predicted in verse 1 and 2. And the way you save yourself from it is by what he said here. Read the Word of God. Listen to the Word of God. Study the Word of God. Continue in the sound doctrine that's been delivered to you. If you do, you'll not only save you, you'll save your family, you'll save your home, you'll save your marriage, and you'll save your friends. I'm telling you folks, the devil is real. He's a real person. He's a spirit. He's at work in this world today. And we see him all around us devouring entire peoples and nations, churches, and even Christians. Christians today are being held captive by the devil. And the way they free themselves, by the way, is by acknowledging the truth, the Apostle Paul said. You know, I, I, I bet you right now, that right now, you know people right now, Christians, that have been taken captive by the devil. The devil's got them. And you can save them. But they must acknowledge the truth. And that's the way you rescue them is with truth. The truth makes you free. And the truth keeps you free as well. And that's why every Christian should belong to a Bible-believing church that preaches God's Word week in and week out because, folks, it is our weapon. It's our defense against being devoured by the devil. That's why this church is right here. That's why this church was formed many years ago, is to give you people right here a place to go where you can hear the gospel of grace and the doctrines of grace and sound doctrine that can save you and your family, not only from sin and hell, but from the coming apostasy and from being devoured by the old devil. Folks, don't end up on the casualty list. Don't become a POW. Get the victory in the last days, and you will if you stay in this book right here, stay true to it, love Jesus Christ, and serve him. You'll overcome the devil. He won't devour you. He may try but you stay with this book right here. He cannot handle anyone that puts the word of God on him. Jesus, Jesus quoted the scriptures to him time and time again and found the devil. Let him alone. He couldn't handle him. That's what it takes. Let us pray. God, we know that there are many around us that have been devoured by the devil. God, we look out in this world today. Nations, people, millions, and even billions. It's sad, God, to see all these people devoured by Satan. But God, we have a chance right here in this little old town in Cody and Balabatran to be a place where someone can go, can go and hear God's Word. Because God, we know it's God's Word, the truth, that sets men free from Satan and protects them from being devoured by the devil. God, we know that the devil would love to devour every husband and wife and every marriage and every child in every marriage and every home in this church right now. We know the devil loved to devour and swallow them up and bring them down and make, make them captives. And so, God, I pray for all the members of this church, the husbands, the wives, the fathers, the mothers, the children. Protect all of us, God, from the devil. And I pray that we'll see once again how important it is to meet together like this, come together, read the Word of God, hear the Word of God, study the Word of God. God, we know sometimes it's hard to do that. And it's laborious, but God is worth it because it will save us. It will save us and everyone else from being devoured by the devil. In Jesus' name, amen.